Hey, everybody. Welcome to the VO Academy. Uh, as you know, this month, we're all about e-learning and corporate narration. Super excited for this. Um, now, the e-learning industry was evaluated to be worth about $107 billion US back in 2015, with a projected growth up to $243 billion by 2022. That's just next year. And $325 billion by 2025. Now, this genre has massive, massive potential and opportunities for us as voice talent. So I'm extremely excited to have Robin Newton here uh, joining us this month as our uh, guest mentor. Uh, she's got a lot of experience, uh, a lot of knowledge, and she's going to be able to help us through our journey here this month. So um, I'm going to give you a little bit of information about Robin. Um, so Robin lives in Beaufort, uh, South Carolina, and she's a professionally trained voice actor. For a long time, she was a technical documentation writer uh, for companies like EMC Corporation and Dell Technologies, which is where she was tasked to narrate e-learning videos. Now, this experience opened up a whole new world of opportunity for her. Now, Robin enjoyed this type of work so much that five years ago, she got really serious about this amazing profession that we're in, and she took professional voice acting classes out in, uh, in New York. Now, over the years of building her business, she has voiced multiple e-learning projects, explainer and corporate videos, on-hold messaging, uh, real estate videos and commercials, all from her professionally uh, built home studio. I'm absolutely thrilled, absolutely thrilled to have her join us here this month. Uh, I think you guys were, are, are going to, uh, to enjoy this entire month and you're going to learn a lot. Uh, please stay stay engaged, ask questions. Uh, Robin and myself will be able to, uh, to help you as best we can here for sure. So uh, for now, check out day one training video that's going to be playing right now. See ya. Hey, Robin. Thank you so, so much for joining me here today. I really appreciate you taking some time out of your schedule to, uh, to jump in with the VO Academy and, and, uh, and help us out uh, with one, the launch of our, our brand new logo system and, and kind of platform. And two, the focus being this month on e-learning. So really happy that you're joining us here today. How are you doing? Hey, it's great to be here. I'm doing great. I'm really excited about this. So, um, and I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to sharing what I know um, with, with folks. Um, I don't know if I, you know, I don't know. I mean, I do have a depth and breadth um, and I'm, I'm excited to tell people a little bit about it. Perfect. Hopefully it add some value. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thanks again for being here today. So, uh, so we might as well jump right into it. I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions and uh, we'll kind of go from there. Okay. So uh, very first one here. Uh, can you tell everyone how you got started out in voiceover? I can. Um, it was happen chance. Seriously. Yeah. Um, did not plan it. Uh, I had been a technical writer with EMC Corporation, which is a software corporation up in Massachusetts. Um, at that time, I was writing technical documentation, teaching people how to use a product, and, uh, which, and it, was, um, it was very technical. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, we had uh, a couple of folks that were very, very interested in bringing some of that technical documentation to life in video. Mm -hmm. uh, because I wrote the documentation, and I think I had, you know, I had a couple of people in, on the executive leadership team, uh, those were the folks that kind of tapped me and said, hey, you know, would you be interested in sitting down with one of our system engineers and, and writing scripts and, uh, and narrating them to share with customers and, um, and with um, other, other engineers in the company? And that's okay. really, it kind of fell in my that's lap. funny, right? Yeah, exactly. That's, and, and it has a tendency of doing that, you know, it's it the same does. as me as well. I mean, like I said, I, I think I did a poster uh, a couple of days ago uh, that talked about the same thing. Uh, and, you know, I was working for a training company and the, one of the coordinators there asked me uh, if I would be able to voice one of the, the, the modules that they had. And so I voiced musculoskeletal injuries. Oh. And I, I had to say that multiple times. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> and of course they, they had no studio nothing like that so yeah. i had to use i had to use uh first aid blankets uh, as a makeshift type of a uh, booth right so so that was a lot of fun but yeah it just you fall right into it and it's one of those things where you kind of you either you sink or swim type thing right and you learn as you go right so yeah yeah cool, yeah cool. and yeah, it was it was a lot of fun uh you know i think the thing that was a real win for me um, number one, the people that I was working with, you know, sure. they, were, they were really awesome. But the familiar, the familiar, yeah, familiarity <laughs> with the subject matter. Ooh, yes. that didn't really roll up my tongue. Um, <laughs> yes, 
when you're writing the books, you can really speak to the subject matter. I mean, I knew this stuff inside out. So, um, and, and that, you know, that's so helpful because you know how to pronounce things. <laughs> yeah. That's a yeah. big one, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. you Nothing know worse I, than trying to read a script and you're like, oh, I got to figure out how to pronounce that, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so how long have you been in Vionia now? So um, I, that, I actually started um, doing that back in, I think it was 2010. So oh, wow. I've been yeah. doing this for a while. <laughs> yeah, good, good. Yeah. So, yeah. so now you've been doing it with uh, employers um, and, and I'm assuming, so when did you start doing it freelance? When did you start doing it on your own? Oh gosh. Um, I think it, it took me about three or four years to really kind of you know, noodle on the idea of mm -hmm. you know, getting paid, you know, because, because that gig um, was part of my day job, sure. right? Yeah. They weren't paying extra to do the voice. They were just yeah. like, hey, it's here's something. Job. You, yeah. It looks okay. good on your resume, you know, <laughs> do it at what you will. Yeah. Um, but the more I did it, the more comfortable I got. I mean, I had, you know, I, I mean, uh, dozens and dozens. I don't even know how many videos um, I did for, for that company. Yeah. Um, you know, you start thinking, geez, I'm, I'm pretty good at this. Yeah. <laughs> you know, maybe I should do this on my own, but I, but it did take me a little while to, to kind of chase that a bit. And, mm -hmm. and so it was a couple of three years or so before I really decided to peel that onion and, and, and explore uh, what, what voiceover work was all about outside mm -hmm. of, the, you know, that corp, that corporation. Yeah. What, what did you think once you, uh, peeled back the onion there and saw what this this realm was like. What did you think? Were you kind of like, holy man, or were you like, I could totally do this, no problem, there's, right? Yeah. There's a lot to learn, yeah. and uh, you know, and it's not an inexpensive uh, undertaking. Yeah. You know, I did go and um, and take some some formal classes. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I went up to the studio in New York, so I, I made an investment in mm -hmm. in. Um, I, I am from the Northeast and from you know, the Boston area. Mm -hmm. So I had a, a Boston accent mm -hmm. that I clean up. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Because I, I can't even tell that you're, you're from Boston anymore. You know, like, yeah, I, yeah. I really, really work on it. Um, yeah. I'm in the booth and, um, and, and it makes a difference. It, it really does. Yeah. I can pull it out of, you know, I can pull it out when I need it, but, <laughs> but I, don't, I don't necessarily want, want yeah. to do uh, See, and I, I love the Boston accent. I think it's so awesome, right? It just sounds just amazing to me. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it, I don't hear any Boston accents in corporate reading. I don't, you don't, you don't hear any of that, right? So no, no, so you I, shouldn't. Yeah. So how challenging was that for you to try and, and, and curb that? It was, it was practice. Yeah. It was, I, I, I did so much and I still do this. Um, mm -hmm. I read a even when I'm in traffic, I read uh -huh. signs out loud. I, you know, I, yeah. I, read, I read bumper stickers out loud. Yeah. I constantly working on it. And, and sometimes it's in a really playful way. You know, I'm, you sure. know, I'm doing a the bumper sticker or something. Yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah. Hey, or, I, yeah. I do that with license plates, right? Like I'll read off the license plate uh, letters and make a words out of it. Right. So, yeah. And I, um. I do listen to a lot of satellite radio in the car. Yeah. So, uh, so um, in Pandora. So, you yeah. know, constantly re you know I'm, I'm i'm constantly repeating the advertisements ah, and, yeah good yeah yeah that, so, that's, yeah it's like anything else practice practice right practice, practice, sure. practice. yeah <laughs> too too funny yeah it's uh <clears throat> like i have a canadian accent um whatever that is i'm not really sure like i can tell anybody who's on the east coast of canada they have a real thick it's almost like an irish type accent mm -hmm. um and then as you go more towards inland towards like ontario area um, it's, you get all more of that French type of accent that comes out. And yeah. then as you start coming more West, it gets a little bit different than once you hit like Vancouver area, it's pretty much America, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> yeah. and, and for that matter, even down in Toronto too, I mean, Toronto is, yeah. is, uh, you know, a lot of times I, we don't even think of Toronto as part of Canada. <laughs> It's part of America, really, right? So yeah. <laughs> so, oh, great, good, good. Yeah, no, it's 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 um, I my main thing that I found with my my accent, my Canadian voice, um, and I didn't realize this until we were traveling around Europe. 
everybody always said that we say a a lot and I never really believed it until people pointed it out when we were in Europe and I was like oh my gosh we do say that a lot you know it was a and and sorry everything was sorry we apologize all the time right so yeah yeah, too funny so um, so what are some of the tips uh, for people that are just getting in, just getting started in e-learning uh, and corporate, corporate narration? What kind of tips can you provide them? Yeah. So, you know, what I, what I came to learn um, was really, well, you, you have to learn a lot about your voice, of course, um, and how you want to use it. But um, there are, there are, your, your voice is your brand's personality. Mm. So, um, and, and what that means is, if you, you, number one, you need to know your brand. I mean, if you, you think Nike, you think Apple, you think, mm. um, you know, Chanel perfume, what, what you know your brand. Right. Um, and, and, um, and, and what it, I mean, for example, Nike, it, mm. you know, you know that that voice or that tone is, is going to be very competitive and inspiring, right. confident, um, where, you know, if you're looking at Apple, for example, it's, you know, Generally, I don't know how people feel about Apple, but, yeah. <laughs> but generally, um, again, very, you know, very innovative, um, yeah. very, you know, confident, um, you know, high quality. And, uh, and then if you shift over, you know, into your automobiles or your luxury products, your luxury, mm-hmm. perf- your luxury hotels and or perfumes or your cashmere. I mean, another, you know, it's, that's just another very different tone. It's right. Just, right. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> You, you, you learn your voice, and you, but you also need to be um, very aware of what it is you're, you're selling. So mm-hmm. for e-learning, I mean, mm-hmm. what is it? Are, are you educating someone? Mm-hmm. I mean, because you, you know, we, we toss around, and I shouldn't say that, corporate narration. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Could be any, it could be any, any one of three things. It, you're either selling, you're, you're selling a product, mm-hmm. uh, you're educating, mm-hmm. or you're your um the other one is like kind of promo or okay. when i see products i see like company right um so you know for so like example products and services that kind of thing is, is, it, yeah no, okay yeah. exactly so yeah. um and and your voice is going to change depending mm-hmm. on what that who your audience is you need to know your audience uh you need to understand what they know but mm-hmm. more importantly they don't know mm-hmm. um and you know, for me coming at it from EMC, the people that I was educating were engineers. Mm. So here's pretty smart guys. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, you know, they 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 have a, a baseline of understanding what you're giving them is a new piece of technology. Um, so they need to understand, you know, how to configure it, you know, um, you know, how to install it, how to configure it, uh, mm. how to, to and and then how to use it. Right. You know the, the what's and the whys. Um, that's a that's a very different conversation than in. Um, hey, I've got a marketing piece, mm-hmm. which I'm now beginning to do more of. That's it's really sort of promo. We're in your face. You know, come see this. This is really cool. Right. This is you know this is a <laughs> sliced bread. You know, it's very energetic. Where if you're teaching people how to you know how to configure uh, a blade server, they're not looking for energy. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. I mean, they're looking for enough that's going to keep them. You know, or stop them from falling asleep, but you, know, you can't have yeah, that monotone it, it, voice. You, you have to have some no. form of, uh, uh, of or some level of energy, um, right? It, yeah, speaking it's an, speaking their it, language, right? Yes, I mean, you need to be informative. You know, it's warm, it's friendly, it's informative mm-hmm. to keep them to keep their attention. Sure. Um, but, uh, because otherwise, you're right. They're going to be like, "Oh my god, I can't listen to another word of this." And I, we've all sat. <laughs> Those, right? like oh my way God. too many yeah, Stop, yeah. Right? I, I worked in the oil field before and it was like before you even started work there was like over a hundred different uh, online courses you had to complete for different companies that we were contracted with or whatever right it was and all of them were the same like that every and but it was just different narrators it was the same basically the same policies and procedures just different companies right so so yeah it's uh, it can be painful sometimes for sure it, so yeah right so, um, you, you, and you use a different to, uh, you know, tone if you're talking, um, you know, if you've got a, um, a human resources piece, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, where you're, you're trying to walk somebody through maybe a new, uh, you know, insurance, you know, a change in insurance policies sure. or something, you know, it's, it's, it's more, it's warmer, it, yeah. you know, it's, it, and I mean, and you've got to come across very genuine and friendly and, you yeah. know, you're kind of 
rocking a baby. You know? <laughs> yeah, because that makes a lot of sense. Because for the, for a piece like that, I mean, you're talking about changing people's benefits, right? Exactly. And so when you start doing that, that automatically, like as soon as you said that, it's so funny because as soon as you said, like red flags popped up in my head, it's like benefits changing. What? <laughs> I don't even have yeah. benefits, but. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's very true and, yeah. a, and so much now particularly you know when we live in you know COVID times I mean mm -hmm. everybody's working remotely so you can't just run into your HR partner's office and and, mm -hmm. and ask them for information I mean everything is online yeah. so yeah. You know, whether you're signing up for new benefits or whether you know you're you you know you're you're trying to work through um you know even these health and fitness apps that I, I know my company makes up makes us sign up for all this wellness stuff. Mm. Uh, <laughs> no, do you uh, use it though? <laughs> well, if you want to save money on your policy, you do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Smart, but smart it, thinking. Yeah. <laughs> but again, it's, you know, you're looking, you're, you're looking for a very upbeat voice mm -hmm. um, that requires, you know, confidence and, you know, there's, there's a sincerity there. It makes me feel safe and, you know, and, um, you know, the appeal is typically to women mm -hmm. um, and not because, you know, men don't sign up for health insurance, but there oftentimes the guy goes home and, or says to his wife, you know what, I don't hear you do this. You know what yeah. we need? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you take care of it. I, yeah, I'll just, I'll go do my thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, and, and, and certainly that's not all cases, but, I know, but it yeah. does, um, and that, which is why women are typically chosen for those roles. Yeah. Yeah. HR roles, where, um, so, you know, uh, you know, that may not be the case, you know, for, um, you know, a Chevy, a Chevy promotion. Sure. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, and <clears throat> I mean, you bring up a good point there, right? I mean, there's going to be Obviously, like anything else, there's going to be certain projects that are specific for females and certain projects uh, that are specific for males. And it all depends on, again, like what you were talking about, the brand, the clientele, what it is that you're trying to sell or, or products or and services. Uh, exactly. And to whom? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, that makes a big, uh, a big difference for sure. So, no, that's good. So, so the medical field and the science fields, mm. I mean, they're, they can be very, um, well, science, science leads towards men. Mm. Um, and um, and I said leans towards, and not always, sure. of course. Yeah. Um, where medical leans towards women, mm. uh, you know. So so that's and, and you tune in to some of those videos online, you'll, and you'll hear that. It's yeah. it's incredible. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I didn't I didn't realize that for for those two um, <clears throat> different fields of work for sure. Um, so that's that's pretty interesting because I've I've done some medical uh, reads. Um, uh, well, auditions, and obviously I didn't hear anything, but uh, I, I don't know if it went to a female or not. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it just kind of interesting to try and figure out, okay, well, this is a medical read. Should it be something that I actually audition for? Should I put my time into it? What are your thoughts on that, actually? Should you audition? I mean, you know what? I don't, I, you know, honestly, I, I'm going to toss it out there. So mm -hmm. if it's for breast health, it probably should come from a woman. <laughs> <laughs> you sure? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> my take because I think you know what women women listen to women, women buy from women, women yeah. trust women, yeah. And and on the flip side, men also buy from women, trust women, listen to women, yeah. Uh, but I think more so, you know, if in, in that in with anything that has to do with children, um, children's health, I think mm -hmm. typically you know tune into a woman's voice, yeah, um, yeah. Where, it's that caregiver, right? It's that nurturer. It's 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 that's the form that we've all known and we grew up with, and that's 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 yeah. part of who we are as a, a civilization, really, yeah. right? And unfortunately, so. it sticks. I mean, it, <clears throat> it does. It's very sticky. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's what like you said. I mean, it's what we know. It's mm -hmm. what we. It's, it's what you know. What we've all grown up with. Um, that's not to say that a guy can't do a sure. great, you know, a great piece for children's health. I mean, yep. they, they absolutely can. Yeah. It's it really boil down to what the company is looking for. They're looking That's for right, a yeah. voice. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, if they're like, if they're looking for, uh, I mean, they would obviously say we're looking for like a father figure type voice that's relatable to a, uh, a daughter or a, or a son type thing. And, and you know, but it would, it would say in the actual uh, audition piece, right? So yeah, yeah, no, really good tips. Really good. That's, that's good. I already learned some stuff here from you. That's, <laughs> that's awesome. Good. Um, so, <laughs> so what type of uh, digital audio workstation uh, would you recommend for someone getting into e-learning and corporate narration? Oy. <laughs> I've been through a number of things, um, yeah. one, number of pieces of software. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I, 
you know, I started with um, Pro Tools mm. and it was just too much for me. It was sure. too techy. Um, I, I, I was overwhelmed with the software. Um, you know, it's really, it was, in my opinion, really geared towards musicians and mm -hmm. it was musicians who recommended it. So yeah. naturally. <laughs> yeah, you, you know what you know, right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, well, it, well, actually, my, the, the, the very, very first was uh, Camtasia because we Camtasia. were. Oh, I've heard about that one. Yeah. 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 So we, so Camtasia and Captivate were big yep. when I first, first started out in the engineering world yeah. um, because we would bring up the software and we would capture screens mm -hmm. uh, because that's what we would do. I mean, I was literally, I was voicing over, yes. you know, um, yeah. every step of the way where um, the tools that I use now, I'm, I'm not doing that at all. And you know, mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not doing any sort of screen capturing. So I'm using um, Adobe Audition. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I have used Audacity. Um, I, I just, I, uh, Audition's really user, for me, very user-friendly. Mm -hmm. I don't need a lot of bells and whistles for audio track. You know, I'm not recording music. Uh, I, I'm, you know, I'm not, I mean, if I do lay a music track, I'm bringing it, you know, in from Storyblocks or someplace, sure. but I'm not plugging in amps and guitars and, you know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm the same way. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I want something that's going to work. That's going to be efficient and, and do yep. what I need it to do. Yeah, exactly. And both, um, like I've used Audacity. That's what I started off with. Um, I, I've said this before. When I started in radio broadcasting, we used uh, Cool Edit Pro uh, yeah. and then which is now Adobe Audition, right? Yeah. So, uh, so, and Adobe is fantastic. It's a great, great program. But yep, for anybody great. who's who's watching this right now, if you don't have money to invest in the Adobe Audition, um, well, there's two things you can do. You can go with uh, Reaper, which I think is like $60. Uh, and that's a lifetime access to that. And it's a pretty good program from what I hear. I haven't used it yet. Um, yep. But Audacity is, is free, you know? Yes. Uh, and so, uh, I mean, you can't beat free, you know? <laughs> <So>. <laughs> <laughs> that, that works quite well exactly yeah. so <laughs> <He's awesome. laughs> well that's funny that's that's um uh, so what were the two programs again that you were saying you used to capture the screens yes camtasia and yeah. captivate right okay so yeah. I, when i worked at that training uh facility there that's what she was using she was taking screenshots of different things because again it was it was for a fracking company that, that i worked for yeah. uh and uh coil tubing company and so they had a lot of technical drawings and, and components that we had no idea what it, any of it meant. So we would get the information and then she would do screenshots and, and do that. So as soon as, when you said that, I was like, ah, it just jogged my memory. Yeah, I, I remember using those as well. Not personally, yeah. but I remember being part of the program. No, so it, it yeah. a lot of work. It was a yeah. lot of work, which is why they paired me up with the system engineer. I mean, he was the one that mm -hmm. was running all the product. And of yeah. course I was writing the scripts and then, you know, we would, we would marry it together, but it, mm -hmm. it, it you know, it was a process and it yeah. was involved. So for, for a program like that, um, how long did it take you to develop a script for, for ah. something like that? <laughs> well, I'm be, I was the subject matter expert yeah. because I was writing the documentation. So I could put a script together, I mean, pretty, pretty quickly. I mean, right. if you know, they'd say we need to do X, you right. know, or we're we're going to reconfigure this setting to change this, you know, over here. I mean, I, I knew that I knew the material. It mm -hmm. was just writing the script, thinking about it step by step so that it matched the video, you know, seamlessly because you want yeah. that to be transparent to a user. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's cool. Use an interface because we, you know, that was, that was a big part of it too. There's a lot of, there's a huge user interface piece to that. So it was really kind of walking someone through the interface, introducing them to toolbars and menus and, and things mm -hmm. like that, so that um, it, it does take some thought, but um, I mean, I could bang out a script and, you know, it, depending on what it was, you know, somewhere between two, maybe, you know, maybe an hour and a half, maybe four hours, depending on what, uh, depending it was. on what it was. Yeah. How, yeah. <clears throat> how in depth that you needed to go and all that kind of stuff. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Cool. Yeah. No, that's good. It's, it's funny when, um, when you get into the zone, when you start to know what it is that you're working with, how quickly you can, you can pull something together. Right. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. uh, you know, it's, it's, um, it goes back to what we were saying before, practice right it's all about practice and knowing what it is that you're you're doing and i mean even when it comes down to doing voiceovers e-learning whatever it is that we're doing 
the more that we practice, the better that we're going to become with it. Right. So, and this is just another, this is another genre that we can get into, uh, to, to hone our skills. And then also, uh, it can be very, very lucrative as, as well. There's a lot of people in the e-learning uh, industry that are doing very, very well, especially during this pandemic situation. And, uh, and home. yeah, everybody's home. Right. So it makes, a, I mean, they've seen a massive increase in, in, uh, you know, the amount of money that's come through the e-learning uh, yep. business aspect of things. So yeah, it's pretty, pretty interesting for sure. So, so I think we're in a good time for that. I mean, all things considered, right. Yeah, all so. things considered. <laughs> good, better, and different. That's right. Well, we got to try and think positive, right. So <laughs> So All tell me, war and COVID. <laughs> that's right. Well, tell me, um, <clears throat> what's an NDA? Ah, an NDA is a non-disclosure agreement. Okay. Now, if uh, now I I haven't had to sign one for okay. the company that I've worked for because I am an employee, hmm. uh, which means I I have. Uh, for all intents and purposes, I've already signed that. That's you know my contract with the company is not to uh, to give away any trade secrets, yep. uh, not to share anything that's proprietary. Which was why for the longest time I couldn't share any of the uh, the e learning that I did because it was all proprietary. So I couldn't yeah. I couldn't build a portfolio uh, that that yeah. yeah. So that that yeah. really. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you got three three years, uh, you know, of or more of experience doing that, and you can't even uh, put that on your your profile, you know. I could not share. So the people who knew what I did and knew that I did it really well, um, that was great. But they were all internal people. Sure. I mean, I could I couldn't put anything on LinkedIn. I couldn't I couldn't do anything with it, yeah, uh, yeah. other than say, oh, I did that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, now, was there any way that you could actually take? Well, I guess not if it's if it's all engineering stuff because that's the again those are trade secrets so you can't that's do anything right. with that yeah okay that makes sense because yeah there was like the the musculoskeletal one that I did um, I I did end up sharing a portion of that on my profile when I first started out so I can kind of get into like medical reads and such right yeah um, sure. but it had nothing specific saying the company name or anything like that it was it was all solely for for medical uh, or the medical component of it so. Uh, yeah. Now, now, <clears throat> now, having an NDA is that something that's pretty common with e-learning and, and corporate narration? D do you know? Like, I know you said you haven't dealt with that yourself because you've been with your other company, but just knowing the industry itself is that something that's that's pretty standard. I would imagine it would depend on what the company was looking for. I mean, if okay. you were training um, engineers on software and there were things that were proprietary uh, trade secrets, I mean, yes, I would imagine that that company is going to ask you to sign an NDA. I mean, mm -hmm. I do work, I, I continue to work for a software company and we beta products mm -hmm. with customers and, um, and those customers have to sign an NDA because we're showing them something that mm -hmm. they have not otherwise would have seen. So, um, and that's exactly what, uh, you know, a corporate narration, you you know, you're going to tell someone something that they don't know and that isn't public, um, you know, up, up until that that point. So yeah, if you're you're you know, you're a voiceover and you're sitting down with engineers and you're you're being exposed to uh, proprietary software, you're, they're going to expect you to sign an NDA. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I've only ever experienced that once before, other than working for an employer like yourself. But um, being a freelancer, I had one, one client where I had to sign an NDA for it. Cause again, mm -hmm. it was, it was software that they wanted me to run through and, and voice over some stuff for it. And, and they didn't want me sharing any information with people. Right. So yeah, it's, uh, I haven't found it common in, in what I've been doing lately, but I, I think as you continue to move on and, and again, I guess, depending on which genre you, you tend to focus on, you know, that's a definite possibility. Right. So, yeah. um, yep. I know of other people that are, that, that are in our network, that have signed multiple NDAs for different jobs and it doesn't have to be, um, you know, um, a corporation per se, like a, an e-learning or a corporate narration. It can even be a commercial for radio and TV, right? So, yep. yeah, you know, if they don't want you to say anything about it because they're not planning on launching it just at the moment, you know. Exactly. So, I yeah. had a real estate piece um, about a year ago mm -hmm. for a, a, a large piece of property uh, in the Georgia, in, in the Georgia area, mm -hmm. um, the state of Georgia. And, um, and they did not want me to share anything because it was a medical facility that was for sale and they did not want to spook um, the doctors that were working there or the patients that were seeing doctors there. Yeah, yeah. So I couldn't say a word about that until yeah. they, um, you know, until they ran the, the 
right, because right. it was it was commercial, yeah. So yeah. it was a there, you know, it was it was a, they were very tight lipped about. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. No, that makes sense, <clears throat> especially for something that's, um, you know, that delicate as well when it comes to healthcare stuff, right? So, yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure. Yeah. Now, uh, do you know, uh, are there any freelance platforms uh, that you use to attain any kind of e-learning or corporate narration? Is there any any platform specific that you use or could recommend? I don't know if I understand what, um, I, I honestly don't know if I understand the question. Sure. When you talk about freelance platforms, what do you mean specifically? So like things like Upwork, uh, Fiverr, that kind uh, of thing. Is there anything specific for e-learning for that? I, you know, not that I'm aware of, but okay. I, I run down that road. I mean, that's, sure. that's not really, you know, where I focus my attention. Okay. Great question. Then that spins off onto this one. Where do you focus your attention? <laughs> Uh, it, well, I, I am employed. I, you know, I have a full-time job. Um, I work for RSA Security. Um, I do a lot of uh, their marketing work. Um, and, and again, that's in addition to, I'm a global program manager for RSA. Okay. So, um, but I do work very closely with um, cross-functional teams, including the marketing team. And oftentimes they'll, they'll come to me and they'll just, uh, they'll say, hey, we, you know, we've got we, you know, we've got some video work. Would you be interested in doing the voiceover for us? And that's sort of how that comes to me. <laughs> oh, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Now, is there any, <laughs> it's just, it just, the sky. <laughs> oh, that's, that's terrible. <laughs> is there any, um, um, like, would you recommend uh, for people to start like digging out to different companies and letting them know that they can do e-learning services for them if they need it, that kind of stuff. Like, is that something that would be beneficial? You feel like kind of like you know email I, marketing or something like that? Or You know, I, I, um, I've been kind of stalking a couple of few people on LinkedIn. Mm. <laughs> if you want to spit you. Yeah. <clears throat> that's LinkedIn a great place. Yeah. Cool. It's, uh, a great it's untapped. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, something that we can definitely utilize a lot more uh, than it, what we are. Exactly. So, um, and, and what I've been really kind of paying attention to are people who are doing the kinds of things that I want to be doing mm. uh, and, and understanding, um, you know, who they're following, um, whether they're following them on LinkedIn or Instagram or, you know, wherever, wherever, the, wherever they're following them. Mm -hmm. But I'm really looking at, at what other people are doing, have done and, um, uh, and and really, you know, I'm I'm kind of rolling through their resume and 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 seeing what their connections are, um, because that tells you a lot about how how they're growing their their career in voiceover. Yeah. Um, you you really follow some of these people that are extraordinaires at um, at at, at e learning or you know corporate video work. I mean, you can see the progression, yeah. and you can see what they've done in the past and 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 how they've grown in the roles. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and, and I think if you looked at my resume, you'd see the same thing in my resume. Sure. Um, yeah. You know, that's, you know, you start off as a technical writer and you grow into a consultant level writer and then you, you, you know, you're promoted to a you know, program manager and, and, and you're going up the chain. And along with that, you're, mm -hmm. you're building on those skills and I continue to use the, the VO piece of it mm -hmm. because it worked, you know, it's worked to the company's benefit and to mine. So. Yep, exactly, exactly, and it's it's. Um, <clears throat> I do the I do the same thing on LinkedIn as well. Uh, there's so many people that I follow, but and there's so many different genres of work that I really enjoy doing. Right. Yeah, so exactly. so that's important to to follow those people. It it is, and 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 honestly, I think a lot of people, if you reach out to them and just say, "Geez, you know, this is really, you know, where I want to focus my attention. Yeah. This is really what I want to be when I grow up." Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, you don't. Know, most people, not everybody, but most people are very open. I've had people reach out to me that I, I don't know yeah. from any, but yeah. they found me on LinkedIn and they've sent me private messages and said, you know, I, I heard this. It's really awesome. You know, how did, how did you learn how to do this? And nice. how do I learn how to do this? And, um, and I, and I, you know, it's, it's, it's really nice when you can, you can give back a little bit and say, you yeah. know, don't do this, do that, you know, look at this, you know, yeah. Yeah. No, I agree with you for sure. And it's, it's, um, <clears throat> it's an amazing thing with this industry because I've never met so many people who are more than willing to help each other out. Um, in most cases, free of charge, you know, 
uh, or very, very little charge. Right. So, um, it's, it's, it's amazing. Uh, you know, um, any other industry you've been in, there's nothing like that, you know, very, very tight lip. Nobody wants to share everything, anything because they're doing what they can to climb the corporate ladder. Right. Yes. And when I first came into this industry, <clears throat> one of the main things that, that I kept seeing was people like Bill Dewey's um, and many others who just kept saying, there's more than enough work for everybody, you know? And it's beautiful because there are so many different genres and so many different facets of each genre as well that just explode into this massive world of voiceover, right? Mm-hmm. So um, <clears throat> yeah, very, very cool. Um, I want to try and jump back a little bit onto the, the, the DAW, so on the recording end of things. Now, <laughs> I just, um, actually, Big Jim was telling me about this. Uh, you and I know Big Jim quite well. And yeah, yeah. He, uh, he, he's a, a guru when it comes to, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Adobe Audition. Now, he was talking to me about batching files. When you do um, uh, e-learning uh, programs uh, or, or, or voiceovers, do you batch the program? So uh, like in Adobe Audition, or do you set up one file, read that file, say, and do all your editing uh, and mastering, and then save that file and open up a new file and go through? How do you do it? I'm not batching. I'm not batching. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I am not the wizard that fixed him. <laughs> it's it's pretty impressive. I I I, I, I did an e learning project uh, a few months back uh, for a gentleman out of Brazil. It was for um, English as a second language, um, mm-hmm. and really great guy, good guy to work with. Um, but I didn't I didn't know anything about batching. And then by the time the the system went, or the or the job was done, it was like 125 files that I had. It was Whoa. a big project, a big project. Uh, he got a really good deal on it too. <laughs> <Uh-oh>. <laughs> so I didn't realize it was going to be that, that much work. Right. But then, again, this is how we learn. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, it was a huge, it was a huge project. Uh, and then when I talk with Jim, he's like, oh yeah, man. He's like, so you just record everything on one file uh, and then you can go ahead and you can set your markers. So like, Okay, this this is my first, say this is chapter one, right? So uh, at the beginning of chapter one, do one second. At the end of chapter one, do five seconds, let's say. And then that's your first your first section. Then you just keep going through. And then you can, you can go ahead and edit and master everything on one file. And then you go ahead and batch those files. So it drops it down into its separate, its separate files. I had no idea that you can actually do that. Like that would, that's, that's going to save a ton of time, right? That's so, news too, because yeah. that's how I ivr work i yeah. do it in i set markers but i didn't realize that you could batch like that so yeah. that's kind of station that i'm gonna have with jim yeah yeah i think we need to bring jim in here maybe this month <laughs> and get him to, to help us out with that for sure so yeah, yeah too funny too funny um sorry my phone's just a ring in here there we go no nope, that's okay um <clears throat> okay uh let's keep moving here so uh, yeah, i talked about that awesome thank you yeah, yeah you bet <laughs> uh here's a good question for you Okay. Because I get this a lot as well. Uh, okay. And I used to ask it a lot and I, st- I still ask it. Um, rates. What, no. uh, what rate would you advise someone uh, to charge when they're starting out in e-learning or corporate narration? Is there like, a, let's say you're brand new to the industry. What, what, would, you, what would you charge? You know, it, um, and, I, and I, hate, I, I, I hate when people answer this question uh, the way I'm going to answer it, but, but it's, it's true. Um, it's going to, I think it's going to depend on uh, the read, you mm-hmm. know, is it a minute and a half? Is it five minutes? Is it 25 minutes? Mm-hmm. Um, that's, that's really, you know, it, it, it really depends. I mean, I, I'm involved in a, in a, you know, a few projects um, he, here. I've got a couple of things on my desk that I have to record tonight, but, um, but it's, it, you know, for these pieces, it's going to boil down to word count. Um, you know, it's a museum piece. So it's a piece where, you know, the people are going to walk in, they're going to have a handheld, they're going to press a button, and it's going to be my voice telling them what they're looking at. So cool. Um, yeah. yeah, it's very cool. Yeah. Um, but 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 honestly, that that's really what it is. I mean, it could be a minute, it could be five minutes, it could be 25 minutes. And I can't tell you, we'll charge 100 bucks, because if you just did a 25-minute video, man, you're getting beat, you know, yeah. for 100 bucks. Yeah. Um, I 
I would absolutely suggest, and it's, it's what I do. I go to the rate cards and I, I take a look at it. And then I think, okay, how do I make myself competitive? Because I don't want to give it away. And, and, and believe me, I think we've all started there, right? Where yeah. it's like, do it for 50 bucks. I'll do it for yeah. 10 bucks. But for, you know, whatever. Yeah, more um, than or, once, unfortunately. <laughs> Never get another gig from them because, yeah. you know, you can't, you, you, you know, it, it just doesn't happen. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you, if you give it away, it, in my opinion, you're implying that there is no value to what, right. you, what, what you have done. Um, yeah, and, good point. Yeah, you, so um, I would, I would, I would absolutely advise that you don't give it away. Um, mm -hmm. If there's something that you'd like in exchange, and if it's not money, maybe it's a you know Google review, mm -hmm. uh, or you know so, like, but something that's reciprocal, that's of that's of equal value. I mean, sometimes that that review on Google is it, you know is is money in the bank. Yeah. Depending on who <clears throat> Exactly. Right? If you get a good um, Google review, then it could skyrocket you into other avenues, right? So, it, yeah. Exactly. So, if you know, if you do really want to be competitive and you're just starting out, maybe that's something to consider mm. um, in exchange for, you know, hey, you know, how about we, we, you know, we we do this. Mm -hmm. You know, it, I mean, <laughs> I I did a, a do-it-yourself series of videos for my landscaper, mm -hmm. and um, and it, which was really which was really kind of fun. I was out yeah. in my front yard, you know, tri trimming um, a sago palm mm -hmm. and we put it on his, his um, Facebook page and, you know, we, we exchanged, we bartered for that because nice. he's yeah. landscape and I have to pay him. So, um, <laughs> so, I mean, Hey, if I can do a couple of really fun videos in my front yard, teach someone how to take care of a crepe myrtle or how to trim a palm tree or, mm -hmm. you know, um, talk to them about mold crickets or like whatever, mm -hmm. um, you know, why not? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that cuts down on your price. And yeah, and then gives them some free advertising as well. You know, exactly. professionally done for them, right? So it, yeah. It, yeah. And, uh, and it gets you out there. You can tag yourself in the video. Mm -hmm. um, you can share it on your Facebook page. You you know, um, you can, you know, I mean, you know, that that's what you do, right? That's that's the beauty of social media. If you're yeah. not using social media, you know, to, to do those kinds of things, you're you're missing the boat. But yeah. But, uh, but yeah, you, you want to attach value um, in, in, no matter what it is, whether it's, again, $50, $500. Um, mm -hmm. what, what we do is there's a skill set involved. Yeah, and we, yeah. you, know, we're, you know, we're paying to keep the lights on, you know, and, and you know, we're paying for the software and the headphones and the microphones and the, yeah. you know, the Yeah, the I mean, exactly. The blankets, exactly. those blankets are not cheap, right? So, yeah. But I mean, <laughs> you think about it this way. You talked at the beginning about investing in this business for yourself, right? Uh, yeah. So you've trained yourself. You, you've gotten the coaching. You've gotten the, the support. You've gotten the equipment that you need, the surroundings that you needed, and all that kind of stuff. So it's uh, it, it's good to barter with people, obviously, and 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 have that you know, hey, I'll, I'll do this for you if you do this for me. Absolutely, one hundred percent agree with that. Um, where I have issues is if you already have your rate low, and then mm -hmm. the client comes back and they want it even lower, right? And I always go back to, well, would you ask your lawyer to do that? But what about your doctor? <laughs> <With the> doctor? <laughs> right? Like you'd never say, oh, heart surgery, it's going to cost me this much. Hmm. <laughs> you know, right? I don't know if I'm going to do that, doc. I think it's, your price is a little too high, right? Like it, it comes down to you're a professional. This is what, this is what we do, right? Definitely. And so we should be paid, paid accordingly. And again, that's not, you're not trying to rake your, your clients over the coals, you're trying to get paid fairly for what it is that you do. And you're providing a service for them, a professionally, uh, you know, uh, professional produced. service. Yeah. Produced Ex service for them. Right. Ex that in turn is going to potentially advance their business as well, especially if it's a corporate narration. Right. Yep. Absolutely. Um, so, so these are the kind of things that when you are negotiating with, with your clients, again, you're trying to sell your services. You're trying to sell what it is that you do and show them again, the value that you can provide back to them. Right. So, so I agree with you. Don't, don't undersell yourself. Right. And uh, cause that'll just, that, that hurts you. And that hurts the, the, the business as well. The industry in general. Well, it hurts your brand. Yeah. I mean, and that's really what we're, that, that's really what we're building. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I run my career um, like a business because mm -hmm. it is my yeah. brand, yeah. Um, which is why I spent the money on, you know, on, on logos and, you know, mm -hmm. uh, business cards and, you know, and all the stuff that I spent my yeah. money on, uh, <laughs> build brand, um, you know, and, and uh, you know, I subscribe to different networking groups and I, you know, I, you know, I've, I've paid for workshops. I mean, 
all that is part of my brand. That's what makes me, I, I you know, as uh, that makes me who I am, and um, and I, I deliver a quality product. That's right. Uh, yeah. So I'm not going to undersell my. I've walked away from work. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it doesn't happen often, but it has happened yeah. uh, where I say, "I'm sorry, I just can't do that for you mm-hmm. uh, at that rate." Uh, it, it's you know, it's just. It's, it's it's like trying to you know it's trying to book a five star hotel for fifty dollars a night. It's not. Gonna, I mean, exactly. you're staying at a star hotel, you know, on the beach with all the yeah. you know, amenity. You're not going to pay fifty fifty dollars. I mean, yeah. if you want to pay fifty dollars, you go stay at the Motel Six. That's right. So yeah. Yeah. people, you know, you 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 know, um, you know, and businesses are aware of that. I mean, there's mm-hmm. there's there's absolutely, you know, anybody who's making that decision knows what you're worth. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah. So we, yeah. we really need to be true to ourselves and, you know, and, and yeah. put it out there. This is my rate. That's right. Yeah. And stick firm to it. I mean, it's, it's fine to, again, negotiate it, but if it's, if it's an outlandish request, you know, that's going to affect you, shut it down. Right. right. I mean, there's, there's no point. There's, you're going to have more problems with that client if you accept that contract, because that's not going to be the only issue that you're going to be dealing with. I can guarantee you that for sure. Yep. Right. So. <laughs> You. can I have this can I yeah. you know yeah and it, and and by the time you, and the last thing you want to do is resent the client yeah. or resent work yeah. um it's good it, you're it's going to come across in in your product and yep. the way you you know and, and maybe not in that voice but in the in that you know in that relationship and, and uh you know you're not going to want to work with that person again yeah. you're not going <clears> to <throat> Right. You, know you might what? get a sour and taste that this is the this is what you expect from the genre. You know, is this how every every you know job is going to be? And why would I want to do this? Right. Yeah. So, yeah. protect yourself, gonna, protect the business. Yeah. Even if they do recommend you, then you know you're. It's not going to be a good recommendation. You True. want yeah. what people out there saying, man, she's the best. He's the best. Yeah. You know, I, I work with her. She's professional. Well, well, yeah. And you know what? Maybe they think I am a little expensive, yeah. but they keep coming back. So yeah. uh, because you know you nail it. Yeah. You get out there and you nail it and yeah. you get paid for what you're worth. I agree. Good. Great, great, great advice. Love that. Love it. Um, <clears throat> okay. So here's another question for you. Should you do your own editing or should you outsource that? When it comes I do to my, I, yeah. I do my, editing. I, I like it. Mm-hmm. I, you know, it's, it is, it can be tedious. Mm-hmm. Um, add some, uh, you know, Brad has, you know, and we both know yeah. Brad. Yeah. Great guy. Pers- nice guy. He, he has spent hours with me, um, you know, getting the editing right and, and counseling me and, you know, and, and coaching me um, because it's not something that comes natural. I mean, he has an amazing ear. He does. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, and I'm like, Oh my God, how did you hear that? You know? Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah he can um, pick up on things. Like I, I sent him a couple demos before and I'm like, you know, I was super excited about it and I asked him about it and he's like, I really like it. But this, this, and this, you need to change this, move this one here, move this one there. And I'm like, really? Okay. And I did that and it sounded so much better. So much better. He's just got, he's got an amazing ear for that. So, yeah. He really does. So he's yeah. taught me quite a bit. And, and I still, you know what, I think we all, we all have something to teach and we all have something to learn. Sure. Um, yeah. You know, in, and the editing piece of it, I, I do my own editing because I want to learn. Hmm you to learn um and i don't know if you know i don't know if i would outsource i don't trust people <laughs> i mean like what if they do something to it that you know is yeah. wrong? <laughs> and i guess i i guess that the flip side of that too if you did trust somebody then you'd, you'd probably have to get them to sign an nda as well because now you're outsourcing that depending on on I even thought of that yeah yeah, so, yeah. No, okay. i don't outsource much you know yeah. i really um i write my own copy i, mm-hmm. I do a I, I, I write all my own copy Yeah, yeah. for my website, you know, wrote my own copy. So I, I don't know. It's, and maybe I'm just, um, uh, a control freak. <laughs> well, I think, I, I think you have, you have a certain way that you have, a, you have a vision of how you want it to be right. Yeah. Based off the content that you have or the information that you have. Right. So just as the client is painting a picture of what they want it to be, you're taking that and you're running with it and actually going further on it. Right. So, yeah. so to take that level of con- control per se and be like, okay, well I, I recorded it, but I'm going to hand it off to you for editing. 
Hopefully, yeah. hopefully you do a good job, yeah. right? Don't screw it up. Don't screw it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That might not happen, right? So, and, yeah. and in all fairness, when it comes to to like e-learning, um, most of your files, depending again on what it is that you're narrating, but they're not overly long. They're not. It's not like you're reading like a you know a twenty minute uh, chapter or, or thirty. I had one chapter that I just read in an audio book that was uh, over an hour long. Uh, to wow. narrate and then I had to do all the editing for that and that was like oh my gosh so it's, it's a lot of work yeah it is for sure for sure okay good good to know that um warm-ups what do you do for vocal warm-ups I sing nice good <laughs> not well not well it doesn't matter <laughs> that's not the point the but point is to have fun yeah good I, good well and, and you know it's funny because um I I love music mm -hmm. um I don't really play, but yeah. um, I do love to sing. So mm. I'll just, you know, and I, I want to start in the morning, you know, yeah. this, and I, I mean, I, I pretty much, uh, I, you know, I sing as often as I can yeah. and sometimes being a goofball, sure. um, you know, yeah. just, you know, just wail and stuff out, but, but it really helps me go, you know, up and down the scales and, um, you know, and, and like, and, and I, and I sing to my dog. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure they just walk around yeah. with you and just loving it. Right. Yeah. 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 You know, you go, you, you, know, you hit those high notes, you come down. Yeah. I mean, I, I just play with my voice a lot. Yeah. Um, it, you know, takes me right back to reading out loud, man, mm. that's the best yeah. way to warm up is read out loud, read out loud, you know, I mean, over and over and over again, I can't stress that enough. And, yeah. uh, and you know, and use different octaves. Yeah. You know, I go, down you know and and uh you know yeah. i'll do i'll throw some character voices in there and i'll just yeah. be silly and uh <laughs> oh, you know and, yeah and, and you and sometimes i mean not not like shouting but i you know i'll really take it up a notch there to kind of right. belt something out you know that i really love yeah um, but you know it's it's that's that's what i do to warm up and it, cool. and it, it everyone it, it feels good it gets me pumped up yeah, um, yeah. pieces are energy pieces you know they're mm. they're up um so it's yeah, i probably would do something different if i was you know meditating <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah it'd be a little bit more chill right it'd be like jack johnson or something like that <laughs> but uh, uh you know and i and i would love to do that stuff but i don't i don't think i think i'm too fast um right. for i mean i just i can't slow myself down enough to kind of, kind of go oh, you Which is what? so funny that you say that because one of my, I think it was like maybe my fifth job that I, that I ever had. Um, I actually ended up canceling the contract with the, the client <clears throat> because it was, it was for a meditation and I'm like, Oh, I could totally do meditation. Good gravy. No way, man. <laughs> like it was, I couldn't do it. It was, you had to go so slow and it was like, and breathe. Right. And I'm like, I just couldn't do it. And, and so I, like, I sent it back to <laughs> Exactly. I sent it back to him like numerous times. I'm like, is this slow enough? He's like, no, it needs to be slower. I'm like, ah. Oh. <laughs> so I just finally told him, I'm like, look, I said, I really appreciate you accepting me for this role, but I said, I just don't think I'm the guy for you. Right. So I apologize, but I think we'll have to just shut it down. And, and he was fine with that. I think I gave him like five takes and then he was like, no, it needs to be slower. I'm sorry. <laughs> so no, it's well, it's, it's tricky. That's their sweet spot. I mean, yeah. I love listening to Carolyn. I mean, yeah. Carolyn, gosh, oh my, what a voice. I yeah. Talk. I mean, I, you know, I yeah. could listen to her all day long. She, I mean, she just, she's just so soothing. I am yeah. not soothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and, and but that's like people had said that my my voice was soothing before, so I'm like, sure, I can do meditation. Let's give it a try. <laughs> I don't think that's in my wheelhouse. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's a craft yeah you know? exactly yeah mike carnes is another guy that does uh really really good meditation he's huge into that he's very very busy so no, yeah I good <clears throat> all right so there's some vocal techniques and warm-ups so that's good now um when it comes to microphones uh what's the best suited microphone for e-learning i'm using and i have and i've used it uh, i've gosh i've had this mic and i know some people have like dozens of mics i don't i have two mm -hmm. um but it's road and mm -hmm. um and it's it's a beautiful mic. Um, it's the same mic that I used when I was at EMC. I mean, they they provided the mic. I went out and bought the same mic mm -hmm. because I trusted it. I knew what it, I, I knew I, I I knew what it was. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, it, 
it's a, it's a, I mean, it's not an inexpensive microphone. I mean, there are way more expensive out there, of course, sure. but, but, um, it's a solid piece, yeah. um, equipment and I, and I have had no problems with it and, and, and it's doing everything I need it to do. Perfect. Yay. <laughs> that, that's all that you need. Exactly. Yeah. Is that, so that's a road and is that an NT1? Is that what yeah. it is? Yeah. Okay. And I know a lot of people have those and, and a lot of people actually in the voiceover Academy have those as well. Um, great microphone. That was actually, <clears throat> I was going to buy that microphone until I stumbled across the, the deity here that, that I'm using here now. Uh, and I just wanted to go with a shotgun, but, but the road was my, my first choice at the beginning for sure. So, and, and to be honest, uh, I, they're the same price. Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. And then, um, I do have a travel rig mm -hmm. and I'm a Scarlet. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. so that's nice. Cause I mean, you know, I go back and forth to Florida yeah. and I just, you know, I, I just put my, my stuff in my car and off I go. Way so, go. yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's good. That's good to know. Okay. Now, are there certain quality control standards that need to be met with e-learning modules? Like I know ACX is pretty strict with that. There's a certain level it has to be at, uh, noise floor, all this kind of stuff. Is there anything specific, like a, a standard that's for e-learning? There, you know, um, I don't, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Um, be perfectly honest with you. I know that everything that I'm producing, um, you know, I submit to mm -hmm. our video folks. I don't know if they even touch it because mm -hmm. what I've heard um, sounds just like it sounded when it left my my yeah. booth. <laughs> yeah. So realistically, they probably took that MP3 and throw it onto the you know the the video or they whatever it is. And, yeah. down yeah. and you know they they map you know they do all the mapping sure. um, with video. But I I they've never come back to me and said we need this or that. Mm, okay. Ever. Yeah. Um, and we've done live directs, you know, you know, um, started with live directs and now they, now they just hand the stuff over to me. And I think the live directs were really like, well, let's make sure this is going to work for us. Right. Cause they were a marketing team to me, okay. they were out on the West coast. Yeah. Um, and they hadn't, you know, they, they, we had not worked together before. Yeah, so there, was, they, <clears throat> there was no relationship built yet. Right. Yeah, exactly. yeah. They, they wanted to make sure that, um, they wanted to see my equipment, which mm -hmm. I thought was unfair. You know, they yep. want to make sure. You know, they're getting what they think they're getting and they, you know, they wanted to hear me read and um, know that I could take direction um, and just establish the tone that they were looking for. And I mean, we did, I think we did three, um, you know, directed reads and now they just throw the stuff over the wall and go, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even question it anymore. Just yet. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's kind of interesting because it's, um, um, it makes me feel better to be quite honest, because, because there is no kind of quality control standard. Basically all my quality control that I go off of for everything that I do is ACX standards. Uh, so as long as I'm sitting at that negative three DB, um, mm -hmm. I'm, I, then I know that it's a good quality sound and, and we're, we're, we're perfect. If the client comes back and says to me, Hey, can we get it a little bit louder? That's fine. At least I know I can adjust that quite easily and, and, and that's fine. But but if I have all those levels, the way that I, I've been using them for ACX, it seems to be working for me. Um, and, and so it sounds like you're doing the exact same thing as well. And, and they're not having any complaints. Um, no. So that, that's that's a positive thing. So that's good. Yeah. Sometimes that ACX standards, uh, it can be a, a little bit of... Um, um, cause some anxiety for a lot of folks when they're trying to, <laughs> to submit their work. Right? It, it's it's yeah. true though. Um, you know, it's funny because... Um, it was it was actually Brad's suggestion. I, I needed to do I, I needed to pick up a preamp mm. because my studio um, is I mean it's it it's it's great it's put together really really well yeah. but my air conditioner my central air conditioner the condenser sits yeah. on the wall outside. <laughs> oh, so I was picking that stuff up. And, yeah, and, yeah. Um, and I live in the south. Well, right. it, you know, live in the south in the summertime and it's hot as blazes here. Yeah. yeah. So I could hear that hum mm. and, oh, well, I'll just shut off the AC while I'm in the studio. Oh my God. Oh dear. Okay. You're sweating. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not working. Um, so Brad was the one that said, suggested the preamp. And I got to tell you, I, I picked that up and it was like a couple hundred bucks, um, you know, which is not insignificant, but it doesn't break the bank. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, made all the difference in Big the world. Difference. Yeah, exactly. In the world. And I, you know, and, and um, I didn't have, Suffer, you mm. know, <laughs> I was like, yeah. oh my, it's like, uh, I was like, wet lodge, you know? that's, that's the worst, right? Like, uh, I, I did a post there where I was talking about the, the, one of the first booths that I had, and it was a Rubbermaid tote, and I had a moving blanket over top of me, 
And when you're reading an audio book in there, it's just like sweat's coming off. It's like in your eyes, you try to read your screen. It's like, this is terrible. <laughs> and you know what? I have to be comfortable yeah. because if I'm comfortable, I can't breathe right. And, yeah. and as soon as my breathing changes, you can hear it in my voice. So I have to be, I mean, I have a nice chair in there. Yeah. I need the temperature to be, you know, comfy because, because it's, to me, it's so impactful to me personally. I yeah. cannot be too hot or too cold. I, you know, I, I can just, you gotta be just right. Yeah. You know, I get yeah, wet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> totally understand. Totally agree with you. So, yeah. okay. uh, I think the last question that I have here for you, Robin is um, now, is it possible for someone to make a good living focusing on e-learning? I think we really kind of talked about that earlier. There's a lot of people that, that, they focus specifically on e-learning, you know, and yep. that's, that's their bread and butter. That's, that's what they love to do. Yep. So yeah, uh, I did find one site. Uh, actually, I think it was Brad that, that shared it with me. And uh, when we, once we launch into this uh, e-learning program here for the, the VO Academy, uh, I'm going to share that site with the, the group as well. Uh, Cause it, it, it's, it's specifically for e-learning. Uh, and you just need to reach out to the gentleman and see, uh, you know, if, if you can actually get onto their roster. But I think they charge, I think it's 150 bucks a, a year. Um, I don't know much about it. I've talked with a guy. He said, yeah, you'd be great. But <laughs> of course, everybody's going to say that because they want 150 bucks, right? So, <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> so, hey, so yeah. I'll charge you 100. <laughs> oh, you'll, perfect. Sold. Yeah, you betcha. <laughs> So yeah, so I'll post that uh, that link later on here, and and, uh, uh, and we'll go down that road. So so that's all all the questions I have for you tonight, here, Robin. Thank you so so much for taking part in this and and traveling along the journey with us here in the in the VO Academy and and, and rolling along with us. So yeah, it's been great. And I hope I mean seriously, I hope that um, that's you know that you know you know, there's always like a little nugget, right? I always yeah. say to people, take what you need, leave the rest. There's always a little nugget there, that's and right. certainly. Um, people are more than welcome and I would encourage them if they have questions and um, they, you know, they want to chat with me personally. I'm, you know, I, I respond to email and I'm on LinkedIn and I'm, you know, on Facebook. So, um, and I have, you know, website and, yeah. um, and I'm, I'm absolutely open to, to answering any questions that I can. Fantastic. Thanks so much, Robin. I appreciate that. So, so anybody watching this right now, make sure if you haven't already reached out to Robin, uh, connect with her on LinkedIn and Facebook. Uh, I, I can't remember. Do you have Instagram as well or no? I do. I'm not, you know, I should not huge into that. that. Yeah. yeah but I'm, uh, uh, there's it, so many family pictures than you will anything else. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So just LinkedIn and Facebook then we'll stick with that. And uh, yeah, reach out to her, connect with her. Uh, tons of information. Thank you so, so much for helping me out here with this. And, and uh, we'll, be doing, we'll be doing more here this month for sure. And I'm sure we'll be picking your brain a little bit more as we continue on. So thanks okay. so much, Robin. All right. Yeah, thank Perfect. you. Good night. You bet. Have a good night. All right, everybody. So as you just heard, <laughs> this, this month's all about e-learning and corporate narration. <laughs> So we'll be doing three live script reads, two with me and one with Robin and myself included. Uh, you'll also get one Q&A session with Robin and myself to better support you. And as always, you'll receive continued support and tips on our private Facebook page to help you throughout the month. Uh, if you can't catch the script reads, you can't make it, totally understand. Life gets in the way. That's just what happens. So please make sure you add your reads onto the Facebook page so that Robin and the group can provide some feedback to you, okay? All right, everybody. So uh, this is going to be a ton of fun. I'm really excited about this and we will see you all in the Facebook group. See you later, guys.